Journey of the Three Kings to Bethlehem Some days after their departure from home, I saw the caravan of the Theokeno come up with some of those of Mensor and Seir at a ruined city. Rows of tall pillars were still standing here, and in many places, large, beautiful statues. A band of wild robbers had taken up their quarters among the ruins. They were clothed in the skins of beasts and armed with spears. They were of a brownish color, short and stout, but very agile. The three caravans left the city, and together at daybreak, and after journeying half a day, rested in a very fertile district where there was a spring around, around which were very many roomy sheds. This was an ordinary halting place for caravans. Each of the kings had in his train as companions four nobles of his own race, but he himself was like a patriarch over all. He took care of all, commanded all, dispensed to all. In each caravan were to be found people of different color. Mensor's race was of a pleasing brownish color. Sayir's was brown. And Theokeno's of a bright yellow. I saw no shining black, saving the slaves, of whom each king possessed some. The three races were somewhat different in costume. Theokeno and his followers, as well as Mensor, wore high caps embroidered in colors, and white bands wound thickly around their heads. Their short coats reached to the half of the leg, to the calf of the leg, and were very simple, with only a few buttons and ornaments on the breast. They were enveloped in light, wide, and very long mantles, which trailed behind. Sayir and his followers wore caps with little white pads and round cowls embroidered in colors. They had shorter mantles, which were, however, longer behind than in front. Under their mantles were short tunics, buttoning down to the knee and or ornamented on the breast with laces, spangles, and innumerable glittering buttons, button on button. On one side of the breast was a little sparkling shield like a star. All had bare feet bound with laces to which soles were fastened. The nobles wore short swords or large knives in their girdles and they had many bags and boxes hanging about them. Among the kings and their relatives were men, about fifty, forty, thirty, and some twenty-year-olds. Some wore their beard long, others short. The servants and camel drivers were much more simply clothed. Indeed, some had only a strip of stuff, or an old garment, around them. From Mansour city, Seir dwelt in the distance of three days' journey, each day counting twelve hours, and the Anko, further on, at a distance of five such days. Mansour and Seir were together when they saw in the stars the vision of the birth of Jesus, and both set out on the following day with their respective caravans. Theokeno also had the same vision in his own home, and he hurried to join the other two. Their journey to Bethlehem was about seven hundred and some odd hours. In the odd number six occurs. It was a journey of about 60 days, each day 12 hours long, but they accomplished it in 33 days on account of the great speed of their camels. 
and because they had often traveled day and night. The star that guided them was like a ball, from whose lower surface light streamed, as from an open mouth. It always appeared to me as if guided by an apparition that held it by a thread of light. By day I saw walking before the caravan a figure more brilliant than the light of the sun. When I reflected upon the length of the journey, the rapidity with which they made it appears to me astonishing. But those beasts have so light and even a step that their march looks to me as orderly and as swift, their movements as uniform as the flight of birds in passage. The homes of the three kings formed a triangle with one another. Mensor and Seir dwelt nearest to each other. The Okeno was the most distant. I saw the kings near a city whose name sounded like Kausur, and which was built of tents on stone foundations. They stopped to rest with the king to whom the city belonged, and whose tent palace lay at a little distance. The three kings had since their meeting traveled 53 or 63 hours. They told the king of Kausur that they had seen the stars. He was very greatly astonished. He looked through a tube at the star that was guiding them, and in it he saw a little child with a cross. He begged them in consequence to inform him on their return of all that they had discovered, that he might erect altars and offer sacrifice to the child. On the king's departure from Kausur, they were joined by a considerable train of nobles who were going to travel the same way. Later they rested at a spring and made a fire, but they did not unload their camels. When again on their way, I heard them softly and sweetly singing together short strophes such as over the mountains we shall go, and before the new king kneel. One of them began, and the others took up and sang with him the strophes, which they in turn composed and intoned. In the center of the star was plainly visible a little child with a cross. Mary had a vision of the king's approach when they were resting a day in Kausur. And she told it to Joseph and Elizabeth. 